All right. I changed the gear. This gear looks pretty good. You're supposed to put a new one in these, but this one looks brand new. This is the one that came out of my motor budget build. But anyway, guys, don't use the high volume, high pressure pumps in these. Just use a stock replacement pump. Because that's what tears these up for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah. I mean, I, I believe these are supposed to be melanized gears. And those are what you're supposed to run. But it depends on the core, on the cam gear. But yeah, melanized gear usually plays nice with everything. But I'm going to put this one in it. Now, when you drop this in, this part only goes in two ways. This way or that way. That's the only way it'll line up with that shaft down in the hole. Now, this gear will go in eight different ways. So usually what we got to do is stick this down in the hole right here and it'll if it falls all the way down awesome you hit it just perfect but usually that's not the case so let's push it down as far as i can then i'm gonna have to have two hands to do this and i'm gonna turn the motor over and push down on that at the same time until it drops all the way down just like on our distributor all right look took a little turning wiggling and pushing but it's finally in there so now if you turn the motor over that should turn and that shaft down by the oil pump should turn also. That shaft right there. And we'll test that theory. Oh. It's a turning. Slowly but surely. It's hard to do this and hold the phone at the same time. Yep, it's a turn. Now, we're going to put our bolt in. And be careful, tighten your bolt down. Look up the torque specs. I don't know what they are, but I'm about to look them up. And torque it down to what it torques at, because if you over tighten it, you will crack this. That's why Tick Performance sells that billet one. And that billet one is a good idea, but it's expensive. Alright, so... I got that torque down. It's 13 foot pounds, which is, I think, 156 inch pounds. So I tightened it up and it didn't crack. So we're all good there. I don't know if I went over it or not, but you put this on. There's a washer and then this piece. This is the shaft that goes through it. Mine was cracked, so I threw it away. But yeah, that shaft goes through here this shaft goes through here like that and that sits down inside there and you got a hole and a pin right here and you got to take a punch and um, knock that pin out and then this will slide off the shaft and then the shaft will slide out the top and then um, you put it back on there's a washer there and a spacer and that spacer fits up inside that. This one does. And you got the washer and you slide it back up and you line the holes up and uh, use a hammer to knock it back in there and then use the punch to get it flush on both sides. And that's uh, pretty much how you do that. But you'll see mine was cracked there. You know what, I knew it was cracked. And I ran it like that for four and a half years and never had a problem. I thought for sure that would come back and bite me. I shouldn't have done that. It was stupid, but <laughs> it worked. All right, I never did go get the seal for this. I'll get it later. But uh, I'm going to roll it over and uh, clean the oil pan up real good. And we'll get the, uh, the, um, the uh, splash guard in keep forgetting what that thing's called and then um, put the oil pan on 
Well, I got the windows tray on. So these are locking nuts. Um, make sure you use those. You don't want those to fall off. So I had to take the oil pump off. Because um, this goes under the oil pump bolt. But every time I've taken one of these off, it's broke around here. So that one's broke, but it's still under there a little. But uh, yeah, when this tray's on. Next thing to do is to dry up these rails real good. Clean that oil pan. And when we put the oil pan on, we're going to put some uh, RTV in the, uh, in the corners. All four corners. And then we're going to drop that rubber gasket on. And drop the oil pan on top of it. And we'll torque it down. Alright, so I got the oil pan cleaned up pretty good. Just a coat of oven cleaner, let it set for 20 minutes. Spray it off. Clean, cleaned off real good with that blanket, the old blanket I was using. <coughs> Dried it off real good, hit it with another coat, let it set 20 minutes, spray it off again. Now on this right here, make sure your water pump <coughs> temp sensor is there. That one's for the gauge. The one in front of the water pump runs the ECM on these cars. Now, there's some plugs you're going to have to have to make sure it don't leak water. That one in the block. Um, there's these two for the steam ports for the back. Your steam port tube goes on those, but on the front of the head, it should be blocked off. And good thing we looked at it. Because look at there, that one's missing. That would have poured the water. And that one's in there. And then the temp sensor, you know, if the head was on the other side, if this head, they're interchangeable, was on the other side, that, that would be where the temp sensor went. So that needs plugged off. So we need to cap that. And then uh, you got your fleece plugs and stuff back here, which I think we already checked that. But yeah, that's it. So this one's missing this plug right here. So if we put water in it, we're just drained right back out. So we're going to take, actually, that's where the knock sensor goes. That's where the knock sensor goes. On this side, that's where the knock sensor goes. So we're going to take the knock sensor out of that one, put it on the other one. Mom will call it for the night and uh, tomorrow. And these grooves right here, this is where we put the sealant. These flat surfaces, the rubber gasket, always use that big rubber gasket. Works the best. So we're going to put RTV right in there. And then on this one, right up in that crack right there. And that's where the RTV goes. Then we'll put the gasket on. Then we'll put the oil pan on. And then we'll check to make double sure that our pickup screen is where it should be. Alright, I'm putting the oil pan on. But there's like a little crack in there where the timing cover and the block meet together. So I'll put some RTV in there. It's kind of hard to get it in there. Make sure you fill in that crack. Now back here... You just need a light coat on that crack, and that's it. Now we can throw the gasket on. All right, put your uh, your oil pan gasket on. Make sure to line up your your uh, oil dipstick hole, and uh, yeah, if you line that up, it's only one way that'll go on. Now we can drop the pan on. And you got these rails that just help keep everything nice and straight it keeps the pan from warping when you tighten it down this stuff goes right around your old dipstick and then uh, the other one goes on the other side it's right there I gotta clean it up real quick so typically on the corners you'll have a uh, stud with a bolt but uh, this block was missing them so I took them off that block. You'll notice on the top, you can put a 12, 
12 point socket on top of there and uh, tighten them up and take them off. And um, I'm going to put the four corner bolts on first and just snug it down. And then I'm going to put the, uh, well, and then I'm going to start putting the other bolts in. You'll notice the old pan won't go all the way down. <coughs> it's not hitting on anything. Well, it is. It's hitting on this gasket. So when you tighten this down, it'll actually squeeze this together and you'll see this bow out. And it does it on the back too, but. That way you make sure you get a nice tight seal, but, um, you know, don't put it on there and think, oh, no, it won't go all the way down. What's the problem? It's just the gasket holding it up. When you tighten it down, that'll compress together. Oh, when I tighten those down, I try to tighten them up even. I'll tighten on this one a little, that one a little, that one a little, and just sense it down nice and even. And we'll go a little bit more over here. See how it's starting to bow out, getting that good seal. And you'll see the full pump pan drop down. Let's make sure all our holes are still lining up. And we'll do the back. A little bit of hill. A little bit of hill. A little too loose. A little bit of hill. Making sure that that gasket seats up in the groove on the oil pan on the front and the back. There we go. Now we'll put the other bolts in. Alright, now tighten these up just like you're doing a cylinder head or an intake. Start in the middle. And uh, work your way out here, here, there. Do it like a U. Or a crisscross there, 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 there. And go inside out. Like, go here, 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 etc. Inside out. Alright, I got all the bolts in it. Now the pan's sitting flat like it should. And I just snugged them up. You don't want to get these too tight. Uh, but I am going to go through and torque these. So, the smaller bolts are 106 inch pounds. The outer bolts are 15 foot pounds. So, again, in the same pattern. I'm going to start in the middle. And, uh, you know, do this one and this one on the other side. This one and this one on the other side. This one and this one on the other side. Here, here, you know, and on out. Inside out. And torque those down. Alright. Those are all tight. Gasket's sitting nice and good down in there. Everything uh, looks good there. Now... What I'm going to do is um, you know on these heads they've got something I've never seen that before that head don't have it on there see I wonder what that is I wonder why that's there it's like a freeze plug or something I don't know but anyway now I'm going to stick a light through here and I'm going to, let's see if we can just see through here, just to see our distance from the oil pump pickup screen to the bottom of the pan. You know what? That looks pretty dang good. I mean, I know you can't really see it, but you can see a lot better if you shine the light in here and then look through the other hole. But yeah, that looks good. Looks good. And another thing, do not forget to take that out before you try to put the oil pan on or take it off, or you will break it and you'll be buying another one. And they're like 30 to 50 bucks. But all right, we can go ahead and put that back in and put that back in. All right, on this um, oil level sensor, you got a little gasket on there. Make sure that's nice and clean. And, uh, This one's actually stuck down in there too far. It needs to see how it needs to lip out some. It's kind of further down right there. You know, they give you all these seals with these rebuild kits. 
And there's another, never nothing in there that you need. <laughs> or, no. So that cell's not in there. The water pump drive cell wasn't even in there. But, um, I'll go ahead and put it on there. If it leaks, well, this is easy to get to underneath the car. I'll just take it back off and replace the seal. But uh, we'll try it first. 